Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So the Motley Fool says tracking your expenses could be the key to becoming rich. So if you're looking to get a hold of your spending habits, then you may want to consider using something to track your expenses. And in this video, I will create a very simple expense tracker that can help you to do just that. Now I'm currently on Google's website, it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So if you're going to code along with me, go ahead and click on File, then click on New Notebook where a new tab will open up for you and then eventually a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to put in a description and comments about the program. So I'm just going to type here a simple expense tracker. All right, now before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button. And to be notified about new videos from this channel, hit that bell notification. Also, you can get the code or just uh, support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import NumPy as MP. I'm going to import pandas as PD. And then from date time, I'm going to import date. All right, then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes. And it looks like everything is good. So I'm going to create a new cell. And now here, I'm going to create empty lists and these empty lists will help me to organize the data all right so there are things that I want to track for the expense tracker so I want to know the good or service so I'm going to create a list for goods or services and I'm going to set this equal to an empty list I also want to know the price of the good or service so I'm going to create a prices list and I want to know the date that I'm adding this expense to my report so I'm going to create a dates list and set it equal to an empty uh, set it equal to an empty list and then I want to know what's the expense type so what type of expense is it is it a household expense is it a food expense is it a a transportation expense so something like that all right so I think this is all the information that I want to track for now for this simple expense tracker. So let's go ahead and run this cell. All right. So I'm going to create a new cell. Now here, I'm going to create a function to add the expenses to the list and organize the data. So I'm going to create a function called add underscore expense. And it's going to take in a good or service it's going to take in the price, it's going to take in the date, and then the expense type. Okay? And then I'm going to add these values to the list that were created earlier. So that's easy enough just by typing something like goods or services dot append, and then I'm going to append the good or service. All right? And then for prices, I just do prices dot append. And I'm going to append the price for dates. I'm just going to append the date. And then for expense underscore type. And I put type here. I want it to be types because we're going to hold multiple um, expense types here. So I'm just going to make this an S up here. Rerun the cell. Come down here and put an S here. And I'm going to put dot append and then expense type. Okay. All right, so that should do it. Let's go ahead and run this cell. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to create a new cell. And here will be the main program. All right. So I want to create a, a option menu for the user. So I need to create a variable. I'm going to call it option for the user. And I'm going to set it equal to, let's say, negative uh, 1 for now. And this will be the user's option or choice or input. All right, and I am initializing the value to negative one. Okay, so while 
while option does not equal, we're going to go with um, zero for now. Then I'm going to create the option menu. All right. So I'm going to print here first, welcome to the simple expense tracker. And then I'm going to print the first option. So option number one will be to add a food expense. Then I'm going to print the second option, which will be to add a household expense. I'm going to print a third option to add a transportation expense. And let's see, let's add a fourth option. The fourth option will be to show and save the expense report. And then the last option will be to uh, choose number zero to exit the program. All right, so option zero is exit the program. Option one, add food expense. Option number two is add household expense. Option number three is add transportation expense. Option number four is to show and save the expense report. And again, option zero is to exit the program, or at least exit the menu in this case. All right, so I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and get the user's input. So I'm gonna set option equal to input, and I'm gonna ask the user to choose an option. And I'm putting backslash in there for a new line. Okay. So the user will choose one of these numbers and I'm going to cast this to be an integer value. So I want it to be a number one, two, three, four, or zero. Okay. So next I'm going to print a new line. This is just for formatting. So that's easy enough just by putting a print statement there. And now I want to check for the user's choice or option or input. All right, so if option is equal to zero, then we know that the user wants to exit the program. So I'm going to print exiting the program and that's easy enough by putting a break statement here. And also I misspelled option here. I have too many ends, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. So that looks good. Else if option equals one, then we know that the user wants to add a food expense. So I'm going to put adding, or I'm going to print adding food. And then I'm going to create a variable called expense underscore type. And I'm going to set it equal to food because we know that the expense type is food because they want to add a food to the, a food item to the expense report. All right. So else if option equals two, then we want to add the household expense, right? So here I'm going to put adding household and then the expense type will be equal to household. All right. And then if they choose option number three, then we know that they want to add a transport transportation expense. So I'm going to put adding transportation and then the expense type will be equal to transportation. All right. Else if they chose option number four, then we want to show and save the expense report. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a new data frame or create a data frame. And that's exactly what I'm going to put here. Uh, create a data frame and add the expenses. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called expense underscore report. And I want to set it equal to PD dot data frame. All right, and then I want to give the expense report a few columns. So the first column 
will be called goods or services and it's going to hold goods or services the next expense I'm sorry the next column on the expense report will be called prices and I'm going to set this equal to the prices list the next column on the expense report will be called dates and if you guess that it's going to contain the dates list you're correct and then last but not least the last column will be called expense underscore types all right and I'm gonna set it to the expense types list okay so next I need to save the expense report so that's easy enough I could just type expense underscore report dot two underscore CSV and let's call this report expenses dot CSV and then I also want to show the expense report so that's easy enough I could just print expense underscore report all right and that should do it so now I'm going to create an else statement so if the user did not choose option 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then they chose an incorrect option, right? So that's what this else statement is going to catch for us. I'm just going to put a print statement here that says you chose an incorrect option. Please choose 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. All right. Okay. So now, if the user chose options one, two, or three, that means that we need to add some good or service and its price. So let's go ahead and and allow the user to enter the good or service and the price. So if the user's option is one or if their option is two or the option is three, then I'm gonna create a variable called good underscore or underscore service. And I'm gonna set it equal to some input where I ask the user to enter the good or service for the expense type. And I'm going to actually append the expense type here expense underscore type because we have that already right it's a string it's either going to be food household or transportation because again we created that here and here and here so that's where we've uh, initialized the expense type values all right and I'm gonna put a colon and then backslash n for a new line and did I spell enter incorrectly all right so I think that looks I think that looks good. All right, I also want to get the price, so I'm going to create a variable called price and I'm going to set this equal to some input where I ask the user to enter the price of the good or service. And I'm going to put a colon and then backslash in. And I want this to be a float, so I'm going to cast it as a float. The reason why I want it to be a float is because we can have values after the decimal place and I want this to be a number. So when we enter in this number, we can have something like 5.99, right, for some good or service. Okay, next I want to get today's date, so I'm going to create a variable called today and set it equal to date dot to day. All right, and then I want to use the function that was created earlier called add underscore expense, and then input the good or service, input the price, and then for date, input today, and then input expense type for expense type and this should create our expense report all right last thing I'm gonna put in a, another print statement just for a new line so I'm just gonna print a new line and that's for formatting so let's go ahead and run this and let's see how everything works out so here it says welcome to the simple expense tracker the first thing I'm going to check is 
to see if we can exit the program by typing in zero. All right, so exiting the program, everything looks good there. Let's rerun this again. Let's show and save the expense report. So I'm going to type number four. Okay, so nothing's there right now, All right? So let's go ahead and add some things to to that report. So I'm going to choose option number one to add a food expense. We have adding food into the good or service for the expense type food. So I'm going to put in an apple. How much was the apple? The apple was 0 0.55 dollars or 55 cents. Okay, so now that's done. Uh, next, let's go ahead and add a household expense. So I'm going to type in number two to add in a house to add in a household expense. So here it says adding household into the good or service for the expense type household, and I'm going to put in rent. So rent is one thousand two hundred dollars and eighty-seven cents. All right, and then let's add a transportation expense. So I'm going to choose option number three, and let's say that uh, I need to or I had bought some gas so I'm gonna put gas for the good or service and let's say gas cost uh, forty five dollars and ninety nine cents okay so now I want to show and save the expense report so I'm gonna type number four for option four and now we can see our our report, our expense report. Okay, so it looks really good. And then I can exit the program, so I'm just going to type zero here for option zero. And what you can do is if you want, if you want this report here as a CSV file, you can go over here to the left and you can see the expenses.csv file and you can just click here and then download it. Okay, so that's basically it. Thanks for watching. And thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on patreon.com slash computer science. Again, if you would like to be a supporter on patreon.com slash computer science, I will leave a link in the description below for that. And also that's where you'll be able to get the code through patreon.com slash computer science. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.